right, welcome to Unplugged with Araldo and Darren. We have a great show for you today. Real Housewives of Orange County, Gretchen, Christine, Rossi, and her husband, Slade, will be joining us a little later on. And we have an expert to discuss hormone balance and how it is key to weight loss as we age. I don't know of anyone who isn't a fan of the hit show The Office. <laughs> I'm a One big of my fan. faves. <laughs> it was such an outstanding and hilarious show. I am Honored and excited to have actor Creed Bratton with us. Creed has gone from comedy to the dark side with his latest performance on the Hulu show, Culture Shock. Creed, Welcome, Creed. Thanks for taking the time to join us. I wish Slade could be with you. <laughs> I know you wanted it to be Slade, a hormone therapy, but we got you we instead. We got you instead. <laughs> so you're just gonna have to sit through it. Can you tell us a little bit about what this installment of Into the Dark is about? It is um, immigrants coming over the border from Mexico. Uh, our heroine is pregnant, and uh, she's uh, wanting to have her baby in a free country like the United States. And uh, it's a horrible, horrible nightmare thing. She gets captured, and um, she's put into a reality that is not actual reality. Oh. It's it's mm -hmm. horrific. And uh, it's it's an eye-opening discussion on how immigrants are treated. I think anywhere in the world anyone can relate to this film. Uh, it makes people think. It scares you. And uh, there's some really good acting. And it's a great script. I, uh, I read it, and I really wanted to be in the project because uh, I wanted to play a bad guy. So tell us a little bit about your character, then. My character is George Atwood. He's a uh, megalomaniac. Uh, he's not a, no bad guys who really think they're bad guys, right? Mm -hmm. he, uh, he's doing good for the prison system for the United States. Uh, he's trying to economize the prison system. And by, as you, as you, if you see it, you'll know this is past tense, for correct? This is after the fact. So, uh, he has put these people in a virtual reality, and they think they're they're in the real world, but they're actually strapped to a gurney. And uh, yeah, mm. pretty, pretty creepy. Pretty creepy. Yeah. You're scaring me right now with that bad guy <laughs> attitude, Creed. I got to be honest. This is I'm not expecting you in this bad boy role. Uh, but I wanted to talk. Really, to you. really <laughs> scaring you. <laughs> I was like. Death stare. <laughs> I wanted to ask you a little bit about representation in Hollywood and diversity. You know, is this sort of, is this a thing that you kind of see being a, a bigger and bigger thing? Is that what happened in Culture Shock? Or what's your whole take on it? Because this, this series is so politically, you know, highlighted, I kind of wanted to get your take. Hmm. Well, I hope so. Yeah. I hope it's just not a, just a horrible slasher thing, that, that they bring some stuff that makes people think and, uh, make some changes for the better, because God knows we need them right now, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. We really do. So wh why why should people watch <laughs> Culture Shock then? What, if you had to give them, a, I don't know, some some bullet points or something, or maybe a, a good reason for watching, maybe somebody's a little skeptical about it, what, what would you say to that person? Well, I would say, thank you for asking me that question. I would say, you think you're going to laugh with me, but you won't. You're very, very afraid. <laughs> I'm actually I'm afraid terrified, now, actually. Geraldo, right, right. you gotta help me. <laughs> what was it like working on a set that was filmed both in Spanish and in English? Do you speak uh, Spanish? Of course, yes, fluent. Chinese, Chinese, Spanish, French, uh, Yugoslavian. Oh, wow. It's in the, most of the dialect that I speak in Yugoslavian, it's even, they don't speak it anymore. That's how old I am. <laughs> uh, when I met Gigi, uh, the director, I was, you know, was first taken by uh, by how how intelligent she was and how together she was. She's a great director, and she didn't miss a beat. She, she would go in English and then to, in Spanish and back and forth like this, and the crew. And uh, no, you got used to it. You got used to. It. Of course, my most of all my scenes were in were in. Um, uh, English, but many, many scenes, uh, there were, there were Spanish, uh, things going on at the same time too. So she never missed a beat and then you, you get used to it. We're actors for God's sakes. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I reminisce if I didn't ask you about the office, my son is a diehard fan of your, of the uh -huh. office. 
So please tell us. Uh, I mean, you're you're amazing. Oh my God, I I couldn't stop. I actually peed in my pants when I watched it. <laughs> it was I, so I, fun. I, you, <laughs> that was exactly. <laughs> why why do you think that character was so special on the show? I people get I get that a lot. You know, I wrote the character originally. Uh, uh, I and presented it to uh, Ken Quapis and, and Greg Daniels. An idea of, of how I how I thought this my rock and roll past would uh, parlay into an office situation. He was uh, drugged out and passed out on a Greyhound bus, and fell asleep in a dumpster. And they gave him a job in, in Scranton in a in a, in a uh, paper company. Mm -hmm. And actually, for the first couple of years on the show, I thought I was actually working at a paper company. I didn't know it was a, was a real TV show. I didn't. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but I think I think the deal with the character is it was the non sequiturs. You just they just came out of left field. I mean, I was, any really good actor could take uh, those those beach balls they throw you. I had a, I had a big bat and a big ball, and it was easy to hit. The right writing was so good. Oh, that's so good, <laughs> Creed. Before we let you go, where can everyone find Culture Shock? Culture Shock Hulu. Mm. Into the darkness, uh, and it's a Bloomhouse production. It's thought provoking. It's scary. It's well done. Uh, check it out, gang. All right. Well, you've made a Raldo <laughs> pee his pants. Absolutely. You've made I got to go change now, pants. but it right. was an All honor right. to have you on the show. Yeah. Really thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Thank you, gang. And, Thank and you. One more too. Thank you. <laughs> right. Thank you. Still to Bye. come, we're going to discuss an innovative approach to weight loss and female health called natural hormone balancing. Stay with us. Uh, we'll be right back. Welcome back. Joining us now is Don Cotillo, founder of Be Balanced Hormone Weight Loss Center. Don has been in the health field for 30 years and is the author of The Hormone Shift, the top-selling book debuted on CBS, The Doctors, and Fox News. Welcome, Don. How are you? Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, let's talk about how hormones affect weight, mood, sleep, mm. um, and how hormone balance is key as we age. Sure. I think that people know, Robin, that hormones affect how women act and, and, and everything else, their mood and their sleep, but they don't realize that they affect their weight. So be balanced to say, listen, hormones have everything to do with your weight. Now people say, oh, calories in, calories out. Well, that theory doesn't work for a segment of the population. That segment is women usually over 35 or 40. Okay. Thousands of women coming to be balanced saying we can't lose weight mm. if you don't balance the hormones. Right, so do mm. you, when you see someone that has an, an issue with their weight, yeah. is that the first thing you go to? Like sometimes like, like the thyroid issue, yes. when I encounter, because I'm a trainer, so I encounter that a lot. But how do you tell if someone has a, a thyroid issue or maybe or an estrogen issue? Well, here's the thing. So the chart that we're showing here is going to talk about our basic philosophy. So our basic philosophy is a lot of women are under stress, so that elevates cortisol. People heard about cortisol, stress right. hormone. Sure. Well, that hormone being up all the time, the body can't handle it. So it steals a hormone called progesterone and converts it to cortisol. It okay. leaves women a condition called estrogen dominant. Now, women, have, it, this on Google, people can figure mm -hmm. it out. But here's the problem. You don't want to be estrogen dominant because progesterone is your best friend. It's a fat burn. It's a diuretic. It helps right. your mood, sleep, helps all types of female health conditions and even female cancers. So to have a thyroid problem, you always have to have an underlying imbalance with estrogen dominance. So by clearing this up, we clear up a lot of the conditions that are related to that. Wow. How do you know if you have a hormone imbalance? Like, how would I know that? <laughs> right. Well, we tell people if you're happy, slim, swing, slim from the chandeliers and your libido is good, you don't need <laughs> us, okay? But if you're, if you're especially if you're after 35 or 40, but there's women even younger, right. that their periods are bad, they're not sleeping good, they can't lose weight, their mm. mood is bad, and they've tried so many things. They're getting hot flashes, the libido is right. going. That shows, so we do everything based on symptoms. So if your symptoms are there, then you come in, we do a free consultation, we explain, we basically help women understand, but our philosophy is helping insulin and helping cortisol, balancing those two key hormones first before we jump in and play with the sex hormones, which is what everybody else does with HRT, right. et cetera. Is there an age when this starts to happen? Like a, a Puberty it can happen. It's, it's you, I'll tell you why. Because <laughs> how many girls do you know that don't have PMS? Right. So that PMS, so when people say, well, how quick do you see people see results? We say, well, if you're a younger girl and you only have problems around your period, around your, you know, you'll notice your very next cycle dramatically different. Cramps and all that go away. Yeah. It's amazing. They're common, but they're not normal. 
usually after menopause, like maybe even in the 40s, perimenopause, menopause, the symptoms with sleep, and now I'm tired, and I uh, my mood is bad. You don't want to exercise. You don't want to even diet. So you're not even going to be compliant. But even if you are compliant, we have thousands of women that are trying everything, keto diets, everything, and they can't lose weight. And here's why. If you don't balance the estrogen and progesterone, the estrogen is going to stimulate your pancreas to produce insulin, and you're not going to get into ketosis. So mm. you have to go keto. Everybody knows keto. Everybody knows lower sugar. But if you don't go that next step to balancing these estrogen and progesterone, you won't be able to lose weight for most women that are over the age of 35, 40. So how does hormone replacement therapy differ from hormone balancing? Right. Great. I'm glad you asked that, Darren, because synthetic HRT is kind of out right now. Doctors hardly ever recommend it because the chances of cancer. But bioidentical hormone replacement therapy is big right now, which Suzanne Summers promotes. Here's yeah. the difference between us. They give you estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone. And most times you only need the progesterone. We mm. balance insulin mm. and cortisol, get your lifestyle changed, you know, do relaxation therapy, work with your diet, do some natural supplements. Once we get everything balanced, it brings up progesterone. We give you a little more of plant-based progesterone, and then estrogen and testosterone balance on their own. So it's faster, it's safer, it's less expensive, and it's more comprehensive than bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. And you're coupling this with also like a good diet and exercise. Right. It's not just a matter of taking. Right. No, no okay. you come in, we put you on a, an, an excellent uh, gluten and dairy-free diet and then do relaxation therapy, very, very light exercise. We get into more of that later. But here's why women stick with it, because they see results. And when you see results, you will keep going. Remember, we have the hardest cases that come to us. My doctor can't help me, I have a thyroid problem, I'm on metformin, I'm on all these right. drugs. And we get the hardest cases and we get excellent results with them. What do the quick. results look like? Well, I, I mean, it's hard to even say, but it's like 15 to 20 pounds we'll get in a right. month. For, if you have it, if you can afford it. And sleep, hot flashes go away in a couple days. It's amazing. And we have tons of success stories. It's because you're turning the body on itself and if you have it, if you can afford to lose it, you're turning the body on itself, and that's what those fat stores are for in women. They're for if you ever needed them, and we turn the body hormonally to need them. And the reason women can't lose weight normally now is because of stress and sugar. Normally, your hypothalamus should be able to have you lose weight if you just didn't eat for a couple of days. Now, again, that's not the healthiest way to do it, right. but if women did that today, they would get they would get like really irritable and whatever, and they wouldn't be able to lose weight. So we're here for those tough cases that your doctor might not, or your personal trainer might not be able to help. Tell us about some of the items that we have here real quickly. Uh, so we use natural hormone balancing creams, estrogen free. So okay. anybody who is on, like has the BRCA gene, who is, a, is a, even a, a cancer survivor can use this. It's 100% safe. Mm -hmm. So the progesterone is plant-based. It raises the progesterone level, which helps with your mood, which helps with your sleep. It helps decrease cravings. And then we have a stress cream. And we're all under stress, right? Yes. So when you're stressed, your body produces so much cortisol and your body can't keep up with that. So the stress cream has some natural ingredients in it that give the body what it needs needs to make cortisol so it doesn't rob from your sex hormones and cause imbalances. Even maca. Dr. Oz talked about maca for years, and maca yeah. is an adaptogen herb which helps with the stress response. So we're getting lowering that stress, balancing your sugar in your diet, and then giving you some natural supplements, and the combination, it works fast. So right. anyone watching out there that says, like, this could be for them, they want to do this, what's, like, the first step? I would say go to be, just go to BeBalancedCenters.com, and then we have a hormone assessment, and look mm -hmm. at your symptoms. Well, let's not make anything up. If you don't have symptoms, and you're great. That's good. Right. But most women have symptoms. And so everything is based on symptoms, and there's no need for blood tests because there's no overages. Any excess of product is urinated out, like vitamin B and C. So that's how we can have a franchise, you know, and do this without doctors on a large basis. So it's all natural. The body balances on its own, and you see quick results. So go into be balanced, and then they'll set up a free consultation. Somebody will call you, answer your questions. It's wonderful. We just want to be that resource in the community to answer tough questions that sometimes right. the doctor doesn't always have time or maybe the extra knowledge to answer. That's right. And just and just real quick, once you start it, do you take it forever? Is it only a month? Only well, after you lose the it's, weight? Well, a lot of times women want to stay on a little bit of that because if we can keep your hormones at a 35 to 40 year old when you're 50 and 60, right. wouldn't right. that be nice? We don't it need to be, be 21, nice. right? right? We don't need right. to go back that far. But if <laughs> no it's one. just that little, if you live in America, you need a little bit of endocrine hormone support because of what we because of the way we live. Don. Thank you, Don. Yes. Appreciate Thank it so much. much. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> So much. Wow. Okay, up next, we have Real Housewife of Orange County, Gretchen Christine Rossi, and her husband, Slade. They have lots of exciting news to share with us. We'll be right back. I must say, I love the Real Housewives of Orange County. I'm a little biased. That's yeah, okay. So I'm thrilled we have Gretchen Christine Rossi and her husband Slade joining us today. Both Gretchen and Slade have been very busy. Gretchen with her new line of home fitness cosmetic and handbag collections, and Slade as the co-founder of BioRains Inc. and the CEO of Grayson Entertainment. 
Plus, they have a baby on the way. Welcome to the show, guys. <laughs> Thank you. You guys, are, you guys are overachievers. Tell us a little bit about the uh, pregnancy journey so far. Oh, my God. Well, I feel fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, no, I mean, it's been incredible. I mean, we're so blessed that we um, have this beautiful little baby girl growing inside of me right now. Uh, we're 22 days to the due date. So I'm a little nervous, not going to lie. Um, but it's been really cool. I mean, it's, it's been quite an experience. I've had some really good days and really bad days. I love the name Skylar Gray. That is an unbelievable, beautiful name. I, who selected it? Who thought about it? Who was it that? Okay. So here's how it came about. So I've always loved the name Skylar. Right. It's been my favorite name since I was a little girl. And I was really nervous to tell Slade because I was like, what if he doesn't like the name Skylar, right? right? So when I told him, he absolutely loved the name. And then um, the reason that it had an extra special meaning to us was that we've been looking to the sky and asking the uh -huh. Lord to bless us with this baby for so long. And we knew that her nickname would be Sky. So that's how Skylar came about. And that's why we knew that was the perfect name. And then Gray came from Slade's sweet son, Grayson, mm -hmm. um, who a lot of people know was battling cancer for his whole life. And he's just this unbreakable little spirit. And so we just thought it was a great way to honor him and um, and just what an amazing kid he is. So Skylar yeah. Gray is how we came up with it. Let's him know we're thinking about him every day. Yeah. I, I absolutely love that. It's such a mm -hmm. strong, strong name for absolutely. a girl. Yeah. I mm -hmm. want to talk to you a little about like IVF and, and what brought you guys to uh, Corey Booker. Can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah. we, we uh had made a decision quite some time back that um, if we were going to do anything, we really wanted the Lord above to use us in a positive way. And uh, we wanted to be sure that all of our projects were related to helping others. And so, you know, this journey through the IVF process was quite challenging and difficult, uh, but we were very blessed to have been introduced by um, some friends to uh, Dr. Mark Surrey and his uh, Southern California Reproductive Center. Um, and had such an incredible experience working with him and, and going through IVF. And then one morning, Gretchen just woke up and she said, this is so weird, but I had this very vivid dream and I feel like I see myself on standing on Capitol Hill. It, it's so challenging for people to go through IVF. It's quite expensive. It's out of reach for so many couples. And it's just not fair that we're, we've been given this blessing to you know, experience parenthood together. And so many people will never have that opportunity simply because of the financial costs. So I literally see myself going to Capitol Hill and changing legislation. And she had this vision. Not even a week later, we received a phone call uh, again from mutual friends who were connected to uh, Kyle and Samantha Bush. And they called up and they said, look, you know, we've been going through IVF ourselves. Our first baby is an IVF baby. Our second child uh, was also going to be IVF, but sadly we lost that child. Mm -hmm. And we were so devastated by it. And literally the podcast that you and Gretchen had done is the one thing that helped get us through that heartache and that hardship. And we'd really like to talk about partnering with you. We think we'd like to change legislation. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was so really, they really kind of had the same exact, uh, you know, uh, vision that we had or what we wanted to do. And so it was really cool that that had all happened. And yeah. then we were happened to be in SCRC where we, where we were doing the IVF. And we were talking with um, the gal there that day, and she yeah. goes, "Well, because because we had said we don't know how we're going to do it, but we're going to figure out a way to do it." Yeah, right. right. And so, in doing so, you start talking about it, right? You make it real. You put it right. out there as a manifest. And in meeting with our friends at SCRC, we had taken a, another family friend into me who was very nervous about going through the IVF process. So we escorted her to the appointment, and in having conversations with them, they said, "Oh." We'd really like to have you guys join us for a special event with Senator Cory Booker. He happens to have authored the Access to Infertility and Care Act. Wow. And like to, like to <laughs> We're like, wow. wait, what? Yeah. I guess this is all really supposed to be happening. Wow. Yeah, it was so, really cool. I and mean, that's how we met him. So tell us wow. about some uh, upcoming projects you guys have going on. You're busy. Guys, <laughs> 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 this uh, thing in my belly. Wait, let's see. Yeah. Are you gonna do oh, the building? Wow. Oh, look wow. at that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big project that we have. That's a project right there. <laughs> Araldo, now you show them yours. I'll show you yeah. my belly again. <laughs> yeah. um, besides that, I mean, we're, we're super excited about BioRains. Yeah, we're very excited. You know, we've kind of entered into the supplement space, and so we're very excited about that company because that too is is helping a lot of people. 
uh, with some of the issues that they've uh, they've got going on. Gretchen's working on some new interior design projects. We've got some real estate projects. Um, there's a couple new TV shows that are being developed. Wow. Um, so yeah, we're just we're very excited to be you know wrapping the things that we love all together, and everything we do has a focus on really trying to help others. Beautiful. That is such a beautiful, beautiful thing to say. So when Skylar comes out in hopefully 22 days, <laughs> what what do you hope for her? If you could if you could sum it up, what do you hope for Skylar Gray? This baby is going to change the world. I'm yeah. Just oh yeah. Yeah, they, they, we really feel like that. I mean, it's really wild because um, a lot of people don't know the story, but and this is part of the reason that we named her after Grayson, is that in the embryonic stage, um, she actually self-corrected herself. So. What that means is that when you're going through IVF, they take you know, the sperm and the egg and they put right. it together and it grows. And what happens through that growth period is it goes to- um, Cell it goes division through, begins. Yeah, the cell division begins. Right. And it typically goes from two cells to four cells to eight cells. Right. And that's how it splits. But in our case with Skylar, it went from two cells to five cells. And this happens a lot, but that just means that it, in the cell division process, it ends up not being a viable embryo because it's not dividing or growing the way that it's supposed to. Right. Yeah, so typically when you see it divide from two to five, it dies off and it doesn't survive. Hmm. Well, in Skylar's case, it went from two to five, and then she pushed out that bad cell, got rid of it, cell corrected herself, went back to four cells, Wow. And then grew to become our one genetically sound embryo Amazing. in that batch. I'm already wow. intimidated. Thank you, Leah. She's a changer already. She hasn't even born yet, and she's already changing things. I know. I would so, like the world to know our, our daughter is a badass in the embryonic yes. state. That's right. <laughs> All right, guys, oh, we are out of time. I'm so sorry. Uh, but good listen, luck with everything. All the best to you. God bless, okay? Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right, bye. Right. Still to come, we're going to show you some great products Aroldo and I love that will help you get a good night's sleep and make your day more productive. Mm -hmm. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We have some great products here today. Now, Araldo, mm -hmm. I know you're just like me in yes. so many ways, always running around, always. needing a good night's sleep. Listen, you're a fitness guy. Mm -hmm. I'm sure sleep is important. Oh, How much should we get a night? Because sometimes I get a few, a little, you know, a little, little less. Yeah, a little less. Listen, yes. according to the ACSM, the American College of Sports Medicine, you should get at least eight hours a day per sleep. Now I know that's- That's a third of the day! I, I know, it's hard to get eight hours worth of sleep, but that's what the studies show, that the body performs at its peak right. when you get eight hours worth of sleep. You need to rejuvenate. Of course, absolutely. I try to know what time I'm waking up and then rewind eight hours and go that's to right. sleep then, mm -hmm. but I make sure I'm not on my phone, right. I don't watch TV. That's right. I always need a good solid pillow and I have the best yes. pillows at home and I'm so excited the to talk about my pillows. pillow. Well, okay, so the reason I like this is because I, you know, everyone's different mm -hmm. and like my back, I sleep on my back. Like, right, like me a, too. Basically right. a corpse. Right. Exactly, like a corpse. <laughs> and I, but I need my neck to be supported 100% of the time and yes. I also have really sensitive skin. So these are half hypoallergenic. Telele, latex, 100%. Oh. I tell you, man, this is from the Havia tree. Oh my God, this is the best latex you can get. Well, I took a quiz online mm -hmm. and so because I sleep differently than a, a lot of my friends. And right. so they were recommending stuff to me that was just like a little too stiff or a little too hard. So Correct. I took a quiz online, mm -hmm. whether you sleep on your back, on your side, what you kind of need. Right. And they created like the perfect pillow for wow. me. Wow, isn't it amazing? Which just was fantastic. Pillow, and amazing what a pillow does, right? It's made here in the USA, which is what oh, I, I like the best that. about it, right? And it's a, it resists mold and mites. I mean, and it's good for kids as well, as Charles says. So I'm telling you, this pillow does it all. You should definitely, definitely, definitely. definitely. I don't want to sleep eight hours with mold and mites. No. That's, yeah, no, at least not, just one of them. They're that not seemed... good. Com they're not good companions. You know what I mean. And, and also, the, you know, the good thing about this is, like, my brother. Whenever I go and stay at his apartment in Hollywood, I'm looking at what you, does bro. He do? What does he do? <laughs> He's got the flimsiest pillows that like collapse on themselves. Boys are like ridiculous. Midget pillows or something. Yeah, no, it's like just like so they're stuffy. lumpy. These like never collapse. Oh so I like God. it. Mama needs her eight hours so I can make it Absolutely. on the show every single day. Absolutely. What you else know, we... do you use to sleep Listen, at night? Though I need help. 
food. You want to put a little, you oh. know, a little, little spray there, a little lavender. Oh, you a know, diffuser. The, the diffuser to set the tone, to set I... your mind at ease. I think that's a great way to go about it. Yeah. Using some candles also to set the tone Man, a little bit. Watching a fire watching of any a fire, sort oh, is just you know, relaxing, getting away you know, from those phones, that's right. away you from know, the that's TV. That's summer, too. You want to sit next to a pool. If somebody has a pool with a little fall, fall, fall or something, you know what I mean? And it's, it's just so, from a know. From a fitness perspective, yes. I got to know, is it helpful to stretch before sleeping, any physical activity uh, before sleeping, or you want to just... No, listen, when you do your activities, you warm up, you do your training routine, whatever that might be, or your physical activity, sports included, and then you stretch afterwards. So your body is well stretched after that. All you need to do is just get it to calm down. You know, usually when you do a run, you're like hyper and you're sweating. That's why I don't work out at Cool night. down. That's very important to cool down. And then you take a shower, and then you get a nice little candle going, a nice little dispenser here. and I have a diffuser at home and I do like lavender scent that just mm. like it, it goes throughout my room and right. just smelling it like Mine it makes amazing. you feel calm like it's I don't just... I don't know why steam would make me feel calm <laughs> but it makes me feel calm listen juvea.com guys get some information on these pillows they are worth it believe me yeah thanks again to all of our guests and a big thank you to all of you at home for watching and remember let's continue our conversation on social media we look forward to hearing from you be sure to share with us topics and guests you would like to see on the show have a great weekend and get some sleep <laughs> the preceding was sponsored by